Let's talk pesticides and rising cancer rates in Iowa. 30 million acres, nearly three-fourths of Iowa's area, is used for crops and rotational pastures, according to 2022 data. While the number of farms in the state has decreased, these operations and their size have grown dramatically over the years. Like in 1950, the average farm size in Iowa was 169 acres. By 2012, the average farm size was 345 acres. The growth in these operations was powered by advances in technology. Tools like GPS guided tractors and soil sensors, as well as massive increases in the pounds of pesticides applied to farmland. According to one analysis, more than 53 million pounds of pesticides are applied across the state each year. Pesticides encompass a range of chemicals that control any number of unwanted organisms, unwanted plants, fungus, and bugs. Pesticides are applied multiple times during the growing season to limit weeds and harmful insects. Pesticides are part of why Iowa's fields are so productive. Research into pesticide exposure also connects them to our cancer crisis. A 2019 review of two decades of ag health study data found agriculture exposures led to a disproportionate rate of prostate cancer among farming couples, which had supported an earlier analysis in 2011. According to the 2025 Iowa Cancer Registry, prostate cancer accounted for 14% of Iowa's new cancers, almost as common as breast cancer. The most widely used of our herbicides is glyphosate. It's found in products like Roundup, which was manufactured by Monsanto until Bayer bought the company in 2018. It's estimated that 16 million pounds of glyphosate-based herbicides are applied in Iowa each year. In 2015, the International Agency for Research on Cancer Cancer changed glyphosate's classification to probably carcinogenic. One analysis that used data from that showed glyphosate-based herbicides were associated with a 41% increase in non-Hodgkin's lymphoma risk. Despite the growing evidence of its connection to cancer, the chemical remains in wide use. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency said it's unlikely to be a human carcinogen. Federal agency, though, is currently updating its thoughts on that. And that's part of how the process works. The slow grind of regulators taking in and sometimes adjusting to what research says. Like with atrazine. It was one of the most commonly used pesticides in in the state. An ag health study initially found no strong associations between it and cancer in a 2011 assessment. But the science doesn't stop once the chemicals reach the marketplace. The same researchers using the same study population, but with additional years of data, published revised findings in 2014 showing atrazine use was associated with lung and multiple other forms of cancer. But regulation doesn't automatically adjust to the most recent science. It's not even standard across nations. A 2019 paper showed a third of the pesticides we use here in the U.S. are banned in the European Union and in many other countries. The challenge for public health researchers is that this exposure creates a complex web of risk factors that defy simple cause and effect relationships. This kind of chronic low-level exposure most Iowans face make definitive connections nearly impossible to establish, but it underscores just how important this research is. Read more of at Iowa Starting Line. We're going to have a lot more on this topic. Thanks for watching.